can you talk about your experience a little bit as a as a pastor? I know that there were some things that the, the local police were kind of trying to intimidate you and and things like that. Can you can you speak to that a little bit? For uh, underground church pastor, it was always facing the risks from the policemen and the, from the national security uh, policemen. Once you know they came to my apartment, but first they did not. They did not tell me who they are. They just said, we just come to check something. Oh, I said, well, come, well, what are you checking about? Well, you know, they're looking for everything in my apartment. They told me, oh, we are the policemen, national security policemen. And uh, we we heard you are a pastor and you have influence in this city. And you said something to against our regulations. I said, I never. I said, I love this country. I love this country. I love these people. I never do this. I never did this. Uh, you must get something wrong. They said no. Uh, we know you know who you who you know something like that. And uh, right now we need you to go back to the policeman station with us, which means they were trying to arrest me. Yeah. But that was in my home, and uh, my in that time my five year old little sign said, where are you going, Daddy? I want to go with you. <laughs> you know, I was almost tearing up, you know. That little guy did not know what's really going on. He did not know his father uh, was, you know, arrested by the policeman. <laughs> he, he even wanted to go with me. As we just heard from one of our leaders on the ground in China, it is commonplace for local authorities to monitor, arrest, and intimidate Christian leaders all across the country. To help bring more insight into this increasingly restricted climate in China, we have prepared this interview with Bob Fu exclusively for you. As someone who has had to flee China, Bob is now a leading voice on religious freedom in China. The information he shares is sure to be eye-opening. Take a look at this recent sit down our president Jason Law had with the leader of China Aid, Bob Fu. Can you remind me, did you say you met my dad in China or did you meet him here? Was it back in the in 90s? Time. Okay. In China. Yeah, we spent some very good quality time together, and uh, he is just a real, you know, godly man, a true leader for the mission, and um, you know, uh, love the Lord. I can tell that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your condolences on that, and we're going to continue to celebrate and continue his legacy forward. So. Amen. Yeah. Well, Bob, quickly, maybe give a little bit of background so people who view this understand. You know, you shared with me how you used to live in, in China. Can you just give a little bit of that? Uh, background about yourself and then how you ended up here in the States? Yes, I was born, uh, grew up uh, in China and educated uh, under the communist uh, atheistic education uh, from my childhood all the way to the higher education. Um, then in 1989, I became one of the students leaders in my college. Um, and uh, led students protest in the Tiananmen Square uh, in Beijing. And uh, later that year, during the kind of uh, Communist Party's time of revenge, um, I was uh, um, being interrogated, treated like criminal. Uh, then I, by the grace of the Lord, um, I think God found me and uh, I became a follower of Christ later that year, and uh, then I uh, started uh, engaging actively with the uh, house church movement in China, and uh, um, started a house church in Beijing, and an underground training center as well. Um, so for that, I, my, both my wife uh, and uh, myself were arrested, uh, then uh, imprisoned, uh, for two months, um, being accused of uh, engaging illegal, so-called illegal evangelism. 
and um, after being released immediately under house arrest and my wife was pregnant without permission uh, or quota of authorization and uh, facing uh, imminent uh, a rearrest and forced a possible forced abortion of our first child. So by God's grace, we fled out of Beijing, hiding in the countryside. And later on, God opened the door. We uh, uh, went to Hong Kong and uh, hiding there uh, for almost eight months. Um, uh, three days before Hong Kong was turned over to communist China, we were uh, admitted accepted as uh, refugees to the land of the free, uh, the United States of America. So uh, in 2002, uh, while I was a student at Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, uh, China Aid was established basically it's to uh, speak I and mean, walk with the persecuted brothers and sisters and uh, be a voice for those voiceless by exposing the abuses of the persecution, encouraging the abuse and equipping the leaders in China. So mm -hmm. that's what I have been doing. Let's dive into that a little bit. The last couple of years, I think in 2017 it was, you can correct me if my years are off, that the Chinese government instituted several new laws that begin to crack down on the church. And so, one question would be, can they crack down on the church, but did they also crack down on other religions, Buddhism, Islam, etc., cetera, uh, or is it just targeting the church? But can you explain maybe a few of those key laws that have made the biggest impact on the church and um, what is their goal in that? As you said, uh, quite a few, uh, I mean, a few uh, laws um, were uh, passed um, in the name of uh, uh, national security by the Chinese Communist Party. The uh, regulation on religious affairs uh, was uh, passed uh, and took effective on February the 1st, 2018. Yeah. And um, so that, for the first time, I mean, really since the Communist Party took over China, according to that law, I mean, basically the religious matter is uh, uh, put on under the so-called national security land. Uh, and uh, the, um, or, uh, the Communist Party made it uh, like uh, all, all, all out approach, I mean, uh, kind of assault. Uh, to attack any independent uh, believers or organizations uh, with um, you know 30 some different uh, government institutions uh, uh, authorized to take down or um, uh, persecuted uh, persecute any one who is deemed as a illegal religious uh, organization religious mem member member um, or uh, any uh, institutions um, and um, the so-called um, sanitization, you know, like uh, basically is to be made religion compatible with socialism and communism uh, was the goal. House uh, church worship, I mean, in your own homes uh, would be declared uh, totally Ill illegal and uh, even uh, prayer meetings. Um, so also the um, Christian literatures or other religious literatures uh, are totally uh, forbidden unless uh, you have to get uh, explicit authorization from different layers of uh, Communist Party authorities and uh, overseas uh, religious education like uh, seminary studies uh, unless you are sent and authorized by the official uh, government uh, institutions uh, like uh, the Religious Affairs Bureau, the United Front Working Department of the Chinese Communist Party uh, at all levels. And, uh, otherwise, um, you would be declared as uh, illegal. And even uh, online study, uh, like uh, for a seminary course uh, in online, would be declared as illegal religious activities and subject for punishment. Are they very lenient? I mean, do they give much approval? Or obviously the control of all that is in the government's hands. So how 
um, frequent the, do they approve it, people to do this? Yeah, this is uh, this law is very very strictly enforced. I, I, I can tell because right after that, uh, actually, um, on the same day on February the first, two thousand eighteen, the same day uh, uh, after this uh, new law uh, took effect in Henan province alone, uh, more than. 10,000 churches, the government sanctioned churches, were closed. The, the quota was uh, to close down two thirds of government sanctioned churches. Wow. And uh, the, uh, all, I mean, all of the house churches, I mean, including the, uh, you know, very famous uh, group, um, I think uh, Father Terry has been even working in the past called uh, China Gospel Fellowship. Yeah. They're, totally declared as illegal and hundreds of thousands of their churches were totally shut down. Basically any um, uh, independent uh, institutions, uh, organizations, especially religious organizations, uh, that is not under its total control is regarded as a, a political threat to the existence of the Chinese Communist Party. Because they view it as a battle and for, do they view it as a battle yes. for the ideology of of people? It is. It's a yeah. battle for mind and heart, and uh, especially in the eyes of President Xi Jinping. He seems to has a particular animosity against the Christianity. Of course, I think because of the rapid revival and the growth of the church, I mean, just to, you know, think about that every Sunday, uh, actually every week, uh, you have. Uh, you know, close to 100 million Chinese Christians were still worshiping, uh, you know, in their uh, homes, on the road, on the riverbank, on the caves, uh, wherever they go. And uh, even with this, uh, the, the Communist Party's strict laws, I think uh, it made them scared, right? I mean, the, the, the number of Chinese uh, Christians certainly had uh, already overpassed, surpassed the number of Chinese Communist Party members. The purity of the gospel and uh, the Lordship of Christ uh, made them scared. These uh, government sanctioned churches who are, are, who are still, uh, if they are allowed to exist, have to um, put a, a photo, a portrait of Chairman Mo and the Chairman Xi on the, uh, in the inside the sanctuary and uh, with the face recognition cameras installed from the pulpit uh, to all the corners uh, inside and outside the church building so that uh, he can monitor and surveil any uh, Christians or um, non-Christians uh, who uh, are on the list uh, of uh, forbidding, uh, I mean, being forbidden to enter into the church building. Wow. But can you explain for people who would watch this what sinization is? Can you expound on that yeah, a little bit? Sinization uh, literally means uh, you know to be like Chinese. I mean, uh, if you just uh, take the meaning on surface, it doesn't really uh, mean much. But in the Communist Party's term, uh, sinization means uh, you know from your doctrine to your core faith to your practice to the even church architect has to be made compatible with the ideology of socialism and communism. That means uh, you even have to change your doctrine. I mean, recently it uh, changed even the teaching uh, in, the, in, the, in the Bible by making Jesus uh, as the murderer uh, of that uh, uh, woman who was found uh, uh, committing adultery. Uh, in the gospel. Uh, and uh, sanitization means uh, the Chinese Communist Party's uh, national anthem has to be sung uh, as the first song uh, when uh, on Sunday worship services. Sinicization means uh, the Communist Party's uh, flag have to replace the cross on hundreds of thousands of churches on the rooftops of their church buildings. You have to obey the orders of uh, uh, President Xi Jinping and the Communist Party before you can obey the commands of God of the scripture. So when so we, when we, one of the ways that we've articulated that is it is the communist party first and God second. And that's just not some catchy phrase. That is the true reality that Christians are being forced into in China. 
That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, so even the second, you know, if you Christian second, they would not, uh, they would have a, a watered down version of Christianity as the second. You can't even have your real Christianity as the second, even after you honor President Xi Jinping. So they're re the the redefining church. Christianity in the process, redefining the church, redefining the Bible. They're, they're basically rewriting Christianity in the Bible, correct? That's correct. Rewriting. So it's, it's part of the Communist Party's version of a cancel culture. I mean, I think cancel uh, your faith. You yeah. Know, right? It seems like there is a global spiritual uh, war, so to speak, even here in America. Cancel cu culture, as you've experienced here, is a thing. And, um, you know, yeah. a lot of people uh, believe what's going on in America right now is. Um, people are utilizing it and catapulting off of that to try to silence the church more and more and it's opening the door to put more restrictions on the church. I know there's a number of Christian leaders in our own country that's concerned about that. And I think we can look at what's gone on in China and um, and learn and, and watch to see what's happening. What would you say is needed from the church? Um, you know, we focus on discipleship training over there. We've got a, a curriculum that, that trains for missions uh, training. Is that needed in China right now? It seems to me, you know, the purity of the gospel, people's understanding of the Bible is at risk right now. Oh, absolutely, Jason. I think, I mean, we know the, the church history. I mean, the per persecution has been a norm, like a, a, a normal thing. Actually, without persecution, uh, you know, it's a really the period, uh, you know, actually the church uh, actually is, uh, is not that normal uh, time. So uh, in the past 70 years in China, under the Chinese Communist Party, certainly, you know, there's not a single day that without persecution, and uh, I think uh, even, you know, with or without uh, or, uh, persecution or with less persecution, and the word of the Lord and discipleship is the key. Because uh, what makes you stand your faith strong? How do you even survive during this persecution? Uh, it's really, uh, ultimately, it's not, you know, by the uh, organization or political party or uh, even our, you know, freedom organizations advocacy effort or a political intervention. Uh, I mean, it will lessen sometimes to help, but uh, it ultimately is really, you know, your faith in Christ and uh, your understanding of the word of the Lord. And um, to counter this uh, sanitization, uh, deforming the uh, teaching of Christian faith, and uh, so with the right uh, teaching, the biblical uh, teaching and discipleship, I mean, that it, that is the only way, I would say. Hey Amen, I agree. There's, there's yeah. families that I'm friends with that use TikTok and their kids' faces are on TikTok. They're, the, they're using this right in their living rooms and their bedrooms at their own home. Are you saying that the Chinese government, even in spite of privacy settings on those applications, are more than likely garnering the audio and the video content and using that in some way? 100%. I mean, you have to read the Chinese national security law uh, that every citizen, every company has a duty, legal duty, to gather intelligence for the Chinese uh, intelligence communities. And uh, so they, are, they have to comply. I mean, they, that's, that's their duty. So the TikTok is a company owned by the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, directly controlled by China. You would think they're not like uh, uh, doing anything uh, about this. I mean, that that's uh, absolutely. What's so they their... can trigger uh, the, the TikTok. Once you install this, your cell phone becomes a listening and monitoring. Uh, merchant device. How would they use that against an average family here in the United States? I mean, are, would they single out families or are they just more trying to gather in, uh, intelligence and listen for things to help create their ideologies that they would want to push back uh, to combat maybe American mindset? How are they using this information they're gathering? Oh, it's been already reported in public knowledge. I mean, recently there is a leak of, uh, they call it big data, plan, all your hobbies, all 
your past criminal records, convictions, even your uh, DUIs, and uh, everything is under is in your file. So when you visit China, what would you have? What would happen if they know you had a DUI? If you know, if they know you have something, they can hold down. And they want to take advantage. I mean, they want to, to basically manipulate that in a way that you have to work for them. Was COVID intentional by the Chinese government? You know, there's some conspiracy theories out there that people think COVID was a biological attack on America, maybe to, to impact our economy with the economic trade wars. Was it intentional or did it just leak out? From what um, the uh, scientific uh, kind of uh, uh, evidence that are already available and uh, the re uh, credible reports uh, available. Uh, so my this is my personal uh, conclusion, my uh -huh. opinion. I think uh, uh, number one, I'm convinced the COVID was a, a, a human uh, manufactured uh, virus uh, and uh, from the lab. And uh, I do not have uh, clear evidence so far showing the intentionally you know, just try to use you try to use uh, try to use it as a, a biological weapon to uh, you know uh, do this. But we have 100 percent, 200 percent clear evidence that the Chinese Communist Party knowing knowingly uh, leak this. I mean, kind of for allowing this to go to all the Western, especially the Western countries. I mean, then you know. First, the Europe, then, then the, the, the United States. I mean, there is no excuse for the Communist Party not to stop it uh, from Wuhan, uh, from uh, certain from China. I think uh, the Chinese Communist Party needs to be held accountable by the whole world. I think uh, for their casualties. So it may not have been intentionally warfare, but it was not correctly handled, and they could have done a better job but they wanted to save face and didn't do what they needed to do? Well, that's the minimum. I would say they, they, they find an advantage of uh, having this in the West, because remember, that's, uh, the, uh, off, that's right after the first uh, so-called phase one deal they signed with President Donald Trump. Yeah. And uh, that they know they can't really uh, uh, accommodate and, uh, and accomplish. And uh, so here we are, you know, the whole World economy is shut down. Certainly, they have a good best excuse that sorry, you know, this is uh, unavoidable. Uh, we couldn't fulfill our uh, kind of a, uh, deal uh, we signed. Uh, they have never done anything really uh, yeah. to fulfill their uh, promise. What What are you hearing from some of the house churches in China right now? We, you know, we've got contact almost weekly that we have with several of the the people we have are friends with. Um, one of the things we've heard is not only are they having to take their house churches and make them into even smaller groups, which requires more leaders to lead them, uh, but they're having to move locations even on the day of, like it's a day of notice. And so they're calling it the moving underground church. Are you hearing similar things or what, what stories are coming out on your side? Yes, you're right. Uh, um, basically, the mood of existence um, of the Chinese church has dramatically changed, you know. Uh, before President Xi Jinping, at least some of the form of uh, uh, even independent house churches were allowed to exist or at least tolerated, right? Yeah. You know, in, both in rural and some urban areas. And uh, uh, but now, under this ruthless uh, persecution with the stricted form, I think the Chinese uh, church uh, has uh, uh, transformed from. Uh, uh, underground church now to digital underground church, even like a mobile underground church. I mean, the worship service, instead of a big gathering, they have the walking worship, uh, walking, talking to God, you know. Kind of. So that is a new form of existence. And um, ultimately, you know, no political authority, no emperors, uh, including Emperor Xi Jinping, or no kings uh, has ever destroyed God's church, right? Because even you put it into our put it into our body in prison, uh, the church is still there as they, as long as the name of Christ and His Holy Spirit is present. And uh, who can destroy God's church? Like Romans eight, uh, you know, um, who can separate us from the love of Christ? And uh, even death 
even Christian communist party or persecutors of any form.